I, I'm not sure if you know what Quad 4 is. I think it's pretty straightforward. But the reality is that we back-tested that economic circumstance. Because, again, no matter what your, your, your life is, the, the one that you love or you don't love, you know, Quad 4 is when both growth and inflation are slowing at the same time. The only time you're going to lose money in Bitcoin is in Quad 4. That's a back-tested fact. It might change. It might not be a fact that everybody likes because it stirs up hornets or whatever. But there's, I don't love or hate that. Right? There are three different economic scenarios out of four where I know I'm going to make money being long Bitcoin, and that's awesome. You know, you know what the only other thing that has that attribute, the major one that you've mentioned? It's tech, big cap tech. Big cap tech, the only time you could lose a considerable amount of your assets, a drawdown, which I think most humans should be aware of, uh, is when you have those quad four deflationary conditions. So that's one thing that I just wanted to submit here today. Like, Is that something that people that are you know, romanticizing about the story, like, are aware of fundamental. I think it would be good for them to be aware of that because at least that would they'd buy a lot more of it at the time when they could get a lot more of it at a lower price. Well, Keith, you know, I'm I'm glad there are traders in the world, and I'm not a trader. But if there were no traders in the world, there would be nobody to sell to me when I want to buy. So I want people to do that, and I appreciate it. But having said it all. Let's go back to the year 2012, and let's talk about trading Google, Apple, Amazon, and Facebook. And at the end of the day, the only mistake you could make is be short any of them. At, at the end of the day, Amazon crushed 15,000 retailers, and Google crushed 10,000 different entertainment companies, and Apple destroyed 10,000 different device companies. And so there is one asset in each of those markets that destroyed everybody else. If you picked the one asset and you bought it at any point in the decade, you were a winner. And if you sold it at any point in the decade, you were a loser. So, you know, the difference is, I mean, when you talk about trading soybeans or corn futures or wheat or oil or whatever, these are commodities and people make them and the price goes up and the price goes down. And if you time it right, you make some money. But when we're talking about a software network that's going to change the life of a billion people and dematerialize a trillion dollars of energy, the only question is, is that one the winner? And Bitcoin is the winner of, of the crypto wars. It defeated 6,500 different crypto competitors and it has risen out of those wars to be the dominant crypto asset network, just like Amazon defeated every retailer in, in cyberspace, just like Apple defeated everybody in mobile space, just like Facebook defeated everybody in social space. You have a chance to buy and own the winner and just wait for the rest of the world to recognize it. And you know, you tell me, is there any winning trade of Facebook or Apple or Google or Amazon stock in the year 2012? It's better than the trade of buying it. Well, it depends on I, what, you know. Depends, when I look at it, it depends I depends on what you're looking for. I mean, it's not like um, you know. What, there, there's making money because you have none, uh, and there's that. You know that that I get that. You know, you, you can't afford to miss this uh, because if you miss Facebook, you're an idiot. You know. Um, but then there's once you have money, there's risk managing the money that you have. Like I would say that a low volatility asset class that I own a shitload of and consume it, it's very liquid as wine. I mean, it's standed the test of time. I mean, if you choose the right vintage and hold it, you can hold it and, and drink it and enjoy it thoroughly. You know, there's, there are a lot of different ways to do this. This isn't just like there's one idea that can change the world. Therefore, I mean, if you took my wine away from me, I'd, I'd hate my life. That would suck. I mean, that's, that's my life, right? It's so, so from a libertarian's perspective, you know, I think there are a lot. For me, what I'm really trying to find is the place for, which I have found, by the way. I've, I've found a Bitcoin is an asset allocation in my portfolio, it's not all of it. And I don't, I don't know why it has to be all or none. And, and I wonder what your thoughts are on that. Because in addition to my company's equity, my wine, my, yeah, I do. There are times to own a lot of gold and there are times not to. That's actually the lesson that I'm trying to, 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 to at least engage so, people in with, with Bitcoin specifically. So Keith, all the guys that have more money than God in this world, right? They have it because they bought or owned or created uh, a technology that changed the life of a billion people. And so I don't think you're gonna get a thousand extra return on buying a, a nice Chateau Brion or, or whatever. Absolutely um, not. If, if you could show me, if you showed me a sugar cube 
that you could produce a billion of and give it to people. And for the rest of their life, they would be perennially happy with no health issues. I would say you should invest in that wine network. But what we're talking about here is a monetary network never before in the history of the world created at the beginning of the S curve. If you buy at the beginning of the S curve and you're right, then you're going to have an extraordinary return as an investor. If you buy at the end of the S curve, maybe you'll hold some value. Look, look, let me ask you one more question. Say you actually wanted to take a million dollars and you wanted to put it in an investment and give it to your daughter or your granddaughter in 30 years. How would you do that? Like, how do you pass down a material amount of money to your granddaughter or your daughter in 30 years? Because I, I can't do it with real estate in Florida. They tax it away from you in 30 years. I can't do it with any stock because I don't know the stock won't get destroyed in 30 years. I can't do it with gold because it's going to be cut in half and maybe seized by someone in 30 years. I can't do it with a bond because, and I can't do it with currency. With Bitcoin, because you can't make any more of it, it's, you've got this pure piece of financial energy. You could buy it. You could hold it for no carry cost. And you would be able to hand it to someone in 30 years. So the magic of this is for the first time in human history, we figured out how to send money forward in time 10,000 days without losing it. It's a, it's a magical thing. By the way, if I give you a battery, if you put all your, if you put a million dollars of electricity in a battery, it bleeds 2% a month. You lose 24% of your energy in a year. You can't do it with a battery. The gold battery bleeds two to three percent a year. We've got a battery that doesn't bleed energy. <clears throat> it's a magical achievement. Nobody in the history of economics ever created a closed, a closed monetary system that respects the laws of thermodynamics and it doesn't bleed off monetary energy into the atmosphere. I mean, how is that not something that you would want to put some amount of monetary energy into to protect for the future? No, it sounds like exactly what you should buy when you're in quad four, when it's for sale. I mean, that's um, because the, the energy, and again, and that's actually a, a, the way we think about gold as well. I mean, it's labor plus energy equals gold price. I mean, that absolutely is the way to think about it. I mean, okay. so, so when we look at, um, when we think about you know, these things and, and we try to like just say there's just one thing, like I don't think that the market is actually giving you that message. Guys, can you throw up the inverse correlations just because, again, I think it's an important lesson. Like why is it that Bitcoin got crushed in Q4 of 2018 and again in, you know, in, in Q2 of this year? It's because it has an extremely high correlation to the, to the currency it is debasing. You can't unlock these two things and say that you're going to be blissfully unaware of these realities if, or you're just buying at a high price all the time. You're chasing it. And a lot okay, of people well, chase Bitcoin. Well, Keith, you could buy it a lot. You can be a lot comments. smarter buying. I'm not refuting what you're buying. I bought a shitload of it, right? I mean, I, you know, I, I'm equating it to how I think about wine, which is, yeah, I, I bought a lot of it. But I'm not going to sit there and just like I, romanticize and not understand that the dollar, the other side of the trade, which it's, it's replacing, doesn't have a huge immediate and intermediate term impact on the price of the thing you're buying. Okay, so Keith, I have a comment on, on Quad4. First of all, there's a group of people in the world that you trade with that believe that in inflation is equal to CPI and therefore you can define a quad for. There's a group of people that I, that I align with, the Bitcoiners, that believe that the true inflation rate is not CPI, but rather it's the asset inflation rate. It's the rate at which the long bond or the T-bill or equities have been moving up for the past decade or the expansion of the monetary supply. So if you focus on inflation as CPI, it's 1% or less. If you would focus on inflation as the monetary supply expansion, it's 15%. And I actually think that the inflation rate for the past decade is 20%. If you look at the cost of a, a, of a 10-year bond that yields $50,000 a year in interest, it went from a million to 10 million in 10 years. That's 22% inflation. So they're a different, you know, over the near term, if you're trading with people that, that buy into your CPI definition as inflation, then that works. But if you're looking over the long term and you're trading with people that actually buy into the asset inflation rate as the inflation rate, you come to a different conclusion. Well, yeah, my, my last point is in the near term, 
Keith, in the near term, these things work. But over the long term, adoption makes sense. Like all of your arguments about why you should short Facebook in 2013, they're all wrong. Facebook's trading at 280 bucks a, sh a share. They're all wrong. You should have never sold it ever, ever, ever. Now, what happens to all these wonderful models if 10 billionaires decide to buy $1 billion of Bitcoin each and announce we bought it, we're not ashamed of it, we're going to buy more. Mm -hmm. All your models are destroyed, completely devastated. Bitcoin goes to the moon because what really matters is with Facebook, does it work? Do a billion people use it? With Apple, do they buy it? With Google, do they use it? With Bitcoin, will they use it? All the, all the near-term trading models, they'll work for 90 days, 30 days, whatever. As long as everybody else in your trading universe sees the world, you see it. But over a decade, over 20 years, over 30 years, the laws of thermodynamics are going to kick into place. And it's pretty obvious Bitcoin is a better long-term asset than gold or corn futures or soybeans or any company run by a CEO, no matter how august and intelligent they are. They're all just merely mortal. And Bitcoin is something better than that. That sounds like it. I, I have no quibbles about that. The more you talk, the more I, I like that story. I mean, it's not, and again, it's not, we can't, if you want, you can reduce uh, me to just being a trader. I don't think you're trying to do that. But the reality is that uh, it's not about the level of inflation. Never has been, Michael. It's about the rate of change of a price basket of things that are inflating. And that's absolutely what Quad 4 is. Sometimes it's deflating, sometimes it's inflating. You'd have to be a certified idiot to say that oil at a negative oil price, which it was in Q2, which impacted, you know, again, the price of Bitcoin was hostage to quad four. That, this is obeying the laws of thermodynamics. It is the secret to the universe. It is calculus. It's rate of change. So again, I, I think, and it would be great that if Bitcoin bulls who have the, the long-term story nailed down would just cede that point. The rates of change, it's not unlike the weather. The rates of change of growth and inflation absolutely impact the price of Bitcoin. And if, if people knew that, you'd have more people you know, less concerned or worried about buying Bitcoin because they'd have the confidence to buy it during a hurricane. A hurricane or quad four conditions is when you have disinflation. So I, I, I don't know how somebody would refute that. You know, can you? Well, Keith, like once I understood Bitcoin, uh, I would go to bed with anxiety at night feeling short because I worried that somebody else would figure out what I'd figured out and they would buy it all and I wouldn't be able to buy anymore. And so once you get something and you look out decade or decades, the only issue is how do I buy more of it? Yeah. Like, so you, and that's you, all we're thinking. So you should be going to bed at night like feeling great about the next quad four is what I'm saying. Why is it so hard to just say that? Like, it's like, this is just, it's, it's we're, using the, we're using math. We're not using, you know, narratives here. We're, we're talking about, you can, if you understand that the rates of change of economic gravity, we're talking like 101 thermodynamics here, that you don't have to have those anxieties. Like, I have zero feelings about Bitcoin. Zero. Like, and I'm happy about that. That's what I want to store my wealth in. Uh, but I want to do I, it. Keith, like Keith, you got to own something, man. You, you know, at the end of the day, you got a family, you got a company, you got a future. Look out 30 years and, and try to figure out what you love wine. You're going to own that. What's your passion? What, what is it that you're going to own that you're going to hold? I, I would buy into the notion that maybe when, you know, if you if you got a model and it says Bitcoin is cheap or it's better or whatever, buy more of it. I just think the danger is selling a good thing. Like, I, I, I'm not very good at selling my things, Keith. I'm good at buying. I'm not. Once you find something that you love, you know, you should hold it because if you sell it to buy it cheaper, then uh, you're betting that other people that have this short term model are going to act however they're going to act. And you, and you might be right, but you might be wrong. And at the end of the day, if you're buying something that you expect to go up by a factor of 100, then selling it or buying it this year is going to be plus or minus like. If you if you bought like Apple stock at two dollars and twenty five cents versus two dollars and ten cents, it se it seemed like a big difference back then. But what if you made the mistake and you were short the share and you missed the next hundred dollar run up? 
I mean, that's the danger of near-term trading. So yeah, and the, and the opportunity. Way, I, the, I, I don't, don't think, think this is a debate about person. trading. Like, if you do, if if we want to reduce this to you guys are traders and we're the ones who get the long term, that's fine. I've, I've already I've been reduced to I know nothing about long term about anything, including my own company, my own family, my life. I'm just going to get up every morning and do the best I can to understand it and put a risk management uh, you know, wrap around this. If it's truly an asset allocation that one should hold over the period that you're talking about, like forever. You know, there should be some risk management around this thing, should there not? Or it's just because buy and hold is not, it, Michael, that's not something, that's something that, that, that companies and no. executives have been trying to sell me their stock for 20 years have been telling me to do. And I'm just not willing to buy into that. It seems to me like every billionaire on the planet got there by buying and holding something, Keith. I mean, tell that to Rupert Murdoch or Warren Buffett or Jeff Bezos or Sergey Brin or Mark Zuckerberg. I, yeah, but what, I is probably, that, what does that mean? Like, that, that doesn't, not everybody's going to be a bit like I'm not a billionaire, but I'm certainly not worth a million. I did it. I did that. You're, but, you're but, talking to a guy that understands. I've been I built my company 13 years <laughs> ago and I bought and hold it. I get it. I totally get it. But I would not. So why would, why would you tell the average person that they ought to? They ought to trade everything a thousand X. I didn't say it's that. It's a lot of work. It's very complicated. I, didn't say, I actually didn't say that. I said that. Uh, why, why, why tax code why wouldn't you, is very if, hostile to that. I didn't say that at all, actually. What I said was, okay. if you believe in Bitcoin like I do, you know, I bought the living daylights out of that in April and May. If you, buy, if you believe in it, why don't you understand it so that you don't buy it at a bad price? There's nothing If you that believed you, in it, you wouldn't sell it. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I don't have to believe it. in it the way that you do, but I'm trying to say that there is a better way to buy it. And in a level of awareness on that, I still haven't heard why economic gravity does not affect Bitcoin. Okay, so my, my point here is that if you're a professional trader and that's what you do, or if, you're, if you spend 10, 20, 30 hours a week and you devet, devote the effort to it, and if you've got all the offsetting positions and you can manage the tax issue and you've got all the platforms, then maybe you can do something there. The average person doesn't have the time, the wherewithal to do it, and the tax code is hostile to moving in and out of positions. I mean, one of the most intelligent things you can do is just buy something and wait uh, for 10, 20, 30 years because all your gains uh, accrue tax deferred. And so telling the average person, like I, I can't go tell my father, I want you to go and study up 20 hours a week on trading strategies and, and take 50 different offsetting positions every year. What I can do is say, Dad, buy a bar of gold, put it under your mattress. And that's what he would have done 30 years ago. Now we have a better idea. You can buy a bar of Bitcoin and you can put it in your hard self-custody wallet and you'll have it and no one can take it away from you. It's an it's a investment strategy someone can execute. Yeah, hundred percent. I agree. Others, I agree, I agree with that hundred percent. I mean, what I'm trying to um, articulate is the very basic concept of a drawdown of your capital. You know, so again, you can buy it at nineteen thousand, or you can buy it at a much lower price when quad four hits. And I mean, a much lower price. We're talking about significant drawdowns. It's not like you can just everyone can pile into it at today's price and has that duration, Michael. I mean, especially if we're talking about the billionaire so Keith, like, who's going to be dead in like 10 years, he might think about, okay, maybe this is, uh, this is something I should risk manage. Well, there's the dollar co cost averaging observation that if you, just, if you continually sweep your excess cash flows into an investment portfolio that's going to be a, a hedge against true asset inflation, then that's a, a wise and rational strategy for a, a mere mortal. Yeah. I, I don't think it's un, for a company or for an individual. I think sweeping your excess cash flows into treasure, a, a, a basket of treasury assets that are going to appreciate in price as the monetary system expands is rational. And if you try to time that, you know, maybe Bitcoin is trading at 19,000, so you don't do it, so you wait for it to come back. And then maybe it never comes back and it goes to 100,000 and then you lose 5x your money and, the, and your money gets inflated away to nothing because you were trying to be cute. And so when we make an investment, when I make an investment, I know there's a 50% chance that I'll be wrong in the next 12 months. Like we bought the, you know, we bought some Bitcoin and traded down. What did we do? We bought more Bitcoin. <laughs> 
you know, and then and then people like they all get all worked up over it. You know, seven days after you did this trade, you didn't make some money. Well, I didn't buy it to make money in seven days. I bought it to hold for 30 years. <laughs> yeah, so why great. don't you come back to me in 30 years and call me an idiot at that point in time? And it all comes down to time horizon. You're thinking about 12 months. And by the way, Keith, in 12 months, you're probably going to beat me on every single trade. I'm an idiot when it comes to figuring it out in 12 months. In 10 years, I think I'll probably be right. But I made the trade because when I looked out 30 years, all the noise dropped away. And I said, over 30 years, I don't want to be holding government bonds. I don't want to hold corporate debt. I, I don't want to hold a, you know, a bunch of big tech equities that are already highly appreciated. I don't want to own gold. I can't figure out what to buy. And I found this thing. And I think it's, I think it's just extraordinary that we even have the opportunity to buy it at this point in time. Because 10 years ago, you couldn't. Yeah, I mean, now, uh, and that's what, when I got interested in it, when the options started trading, I could actually measure and map the volatility in terms of how people were, it's not just about the volatility of the asset, it's actually about what people are betting on the future volatility of the asset, which people have perpetually been making the wrong bet. Really, since if you go back to 2017, that's when we were in what I call economically quad two. This is what um, Bitcoin people should be really excited about when you have both growth and inflation accelerating at the same time and the dollar is getting decimated. Now, there's, there's plenty of scope for the long term, which is why I'm most interested in Bitcoin over the intermediate to long term. Guys, pop up slide 88. The, the long term chart of the dollar, I don't know if people who are you know, hodlers or not, uh, understand what that is. I've been reduced to a trader, so they might as well be called something. I mean, it's, 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 it's what it is. I mean, the US dollar ha can get annihilated from that level for many of the reasons, by the way, that you mentioned and uh, are the 13 years of reasons why I built this firm, because I do have a passion to explain this. There's a passion in explaining that economic gravity and the rates of change and the secret to the universe of calculus absolutely matters, Michael. That is my passion and yeah. that is my edge and I am not some hokey trader. That's, that's what I think is the big opportunity in Bitcoin is by the time you get to quad two, uh, which is going to be here imminently here in the next uh, three to six quarters, um, you know, Bitcoin could go to 40,000. I don't know what the price is. I think it'd be arrogant to actually say what the price is because it's more about the momentum of the price because the momentum of the upside of the price reflects the economic conditions. And that's something that um, I'm going to try to explain to people over. I think it's I think it's a little lazy for me to say that I'm going to uh, try to help people risk manage assets without an intermediate to long term view. But that is my intermediate to long term view on Bitcoin and why on dips. I absolutely buy it. You know, Keith, I, th I think that everybody I, I think everybody would stampede to hedge eye and we'd all be subscribers. If you started publishing charts that compared Bitcoin to gold, silver, Apple, Amazon, yeah, we do. And we Matt do. That's why we have so many subscribers. <laughs> and we're gonna. I'm gonna do it more I uh, systematically. I can't though. find them, right? Yeah. So, for example, start to show me some charts that are comparing liquidity and volatility and return yeah. of all those assets to Bitcoin. I think that there's a vacuum. Everybody needs that. Yeah. 100%. I mean, they all they all are looking for that and. You and I agree on one thing. There's a $250 trillion ocean of assets. They're all looking for the ideal store of value right now. I Agreed. believe that, that the obvious question is, how do we explain to people that Bitcoin is digital gold, it's, it's a better gold than gold, and it's a better store of value than big tech? And we can show them with numbers and we can show them with narratives, but as that happens, then a lot of that monetary energy is going to flow from the asset ocean into the crypto pond. And everybody that do makes that transition is going to benefit. So it's a chance to do good for the world. Yeah, That's why I'm on your show. I think if, if you wanted to make all of your subscribers, you know, very, very successful, I think educate them on the trade-offs between Bitcoin and those other assets, because there's a vacuum there. And I don't think anybody is really printing those charts. I don't see them. If I saw them, I'd be tweeting them. Yeah, well, because I don't like like anything that has a value. Are you going to give me your Bitcoin for free? No, I'm not giving people that for free. So it's like just like any good software. It's you know research as a service. And and yeah. that's oh, they'll that's, sign up for it. Yeah, I, I they already do. Why don't it's not you give like me a little uh, taste some and I'll tweet firm. it. <laughs> we have so what we what we do, Michael, you, just to. It's simple. Yeah. There's a, it's a price, okay. volume, volatility visualization 
of not just Bitcoin, but it versus the alternative asset classes fully loaded with you know, the volume piece, which is the flow. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's, that's what, what I'm talking about. That's why a lot of my subscribers are quite interested in this discussion, and they often are, where you have somebody who's longer term, and I'm trying to help people manage the immediate to intermediate term around that long-term view. So that's what we do, and I, and I will. I'll, I'll, se I'll send you plenty of, of, uh, of that, and, and maybe we will just make it for Bitcoin subscribers a simple, you know, simple subscription. You should be aware of what the price volume volatility yeah. numbers are daily and across durations. It's a trivial matter to me, at least in, if you, in terms of how we distribute it. Keith, I, I, I can't find any place where I can go online every day and see these rolling volatility right. return uh, comparisons. Right. If you gave me one static chart like that, It'd I would blast it to the world and you put a link back to Hedgeye and then all those cyber hornets are going to go from buzzing around your head to becoming your friends because you're going to be providing them with the information they need to explain why Bitcoin is a great treasury reserve asset to everyone that's still trapped in gold and silver and bonds and, well, the, the, and the, the, only, the only problem with this information is the point that i've been trying to make and because you can't visualize it because you don't have it they don't have it in front of them uh i have it in front of them, me i write it down every day it's 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 in obviously predictive tracking all goes every single day i've been trying to say that that when when you see the flow of it all you will notice very quickly when we're entering a quad four and that will be for the hornets like a big can of raid and it's just that's all it is it's 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 a risk and I don't know why, when, you, when you're looking at the price volume volatility into the pending economic conditions, again, I equate quad four to any kind of an avalanche or something that, again, in phase transition terms, would, again, change the phase of what we were in prior, you will see that. You will absolutely see it, and then maybe it'll be easier for me to communicate why the quad four actually does matter to Bitcoin. And if it stops mattering, we'll, we'll see that, too. Uh, I think it's an, important, um, it's an important thing for people to be aware of. Yeah, people that understand Bitcoin are, are owning it. They're not trading it. I mean, if you, if you told everybody that owned Apple stock to trade it in 2013, they all would have lost money. I mean, in fact, all the big winners, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, Google, you would have lost money if you'd ever traded them at all in the last decade because you never want to be short. Right? Look, look, maybe if you perfectly traded them and you shorted them going down and you went long on the trough, maybe if you're a genius, but I can't figure that out. I mean, I, yeah, I, I no, can't I, recommend it I, conscious to I can't, mortal. To I can't that. figure out the company that you created that you became a billionaire with, and you can't figure out my predictive tracking algos. I got it. Uh, but, you know, the, at, the end of, at the end of April, or at the end of August, for that matter, you know, there are plenty of opportunities where you could have risk managed Apple, and that's what we're really trying to help people. If it has nothing to do with, like, oh, I missed it. I don't have those kinds of anxieties. Um, 